Hello and welcome to the vlog. On a beautiful sunny morning at the end of September, I set off from the top of Bosley Locks on the Macclesfield Canal, heading northeastish. I could not have asked for better weather. To whomever was aboard this boat, I apologise for speeding past like an uncouth hooligan. I've no idea what got into me. This splodge on the side of the canal is the location of the leak that had caused my trip up the locks to be delayed by a week. That cloth-covered mound is the CRT's attempt to stem the dribble. I do hope that's just temporary. Most narrowboats have just one or two paint colours, but occasionally you spot one that's been fully artworked, like this. Amazing. I'd been slightly dreading this section of the canal, as there are two swing bridges, the first of which requires you to stop the road traffic, who will undoubtedly be annoyed at this and you have to run over that footbridge to get to the controls, then back over again to fetch the boat through. Being solo, this will be long-winded and the traffic even more angry. At least the bridge is electronically powered. There's the control box I need to use. But fortune was in my favour, because as I went up to suss out what to do, I met a woman coming up the towpath the other way, who also headed across the swing bridge with a purposeful look in her eye. It turned out she was about to open it for a boat coming the other way, so I'd be able to go through at the same time and not have to dash about like a mad thing. The traffic barriers go down, And, after a seemingly interminable wait, which I've edited out, the bridge swings open. The other boat came through, and the lady kindly kept the bridge open, until I too had taken my boat to the other side. This saved me a lot of aggro, so I was immensely pleased. It's not a hugely busy road, but all the running around single-handed would have made this take longer than ideal, so I breathed a sigh of relief and carried on my travels. Whoever built this canal had a fondness for swing bridges because here's the first of several places where such a bridge used to be, now unused and just a narrowing of the waterway. I'd go through loads of these as I went along. As expected, it wasn't long until this sign warned me of the second swing bridge I'd need to tackle. It's not on a road and it's not powered, so I'd need to push it open myself. The trouble for a solo boater is, once you're on the other side and the bridge open, how do you get back to the boat? The answer is, you take the boat right up to it and step off with the bow line so as to keep the boat from drifting off. This has been thought about because there are small bollards to tie to on this side of the canal. Mm. 
With the boat secured, I could push my British Waterways key into the lock, lift the somewhat awkward latch and push the bridge around. It's not that heavy, they're quite well weighted. Now I could untie the boat and step back on the bow, crab my way up the gunnels to the back and steer the boat through the gap. Coming to a halt with the stern just past the bridge, I could then tie off to that other bollard, step back off and close the bridge before setting off again. Phew, easy but laborious. Isn't that a fabulous view? No wonder the Mac is my new favourite canal, even with those pesky swing bridges. Just after this bridge, there's a garden centre on the left, and I needed a new bit for my water hose. Luckily, there's also loads of mooring here, so I pulled in for a quick stop. Half an hour later, and I was off again. Incidentally, notice the man with the dogs on the towpath. He'll be in the video for the next minute or so, which is a good illustration of how slowly narrowboats cruise along. That's another of the famous snake bridges found on this canal, which let the old barge horses cross sides without getting the rope snagged on the bridge by curling round on themselves. I wish I could take dog happiness as a drug. I presume these are dry stone walls, in which case they fascinate me. How do they stay up? I must take a course on it one day. The dogs are curious too. These new built houses peeping over the canal embankment mark the start of Macclesfield, a town that dates back to at least 1085, having been mentioned in the Doomsday Book. I love the contrast with these stone buttresses keeping the land to the side from sliding into the canal cutting. Look who's hiding under this bridge on the left. It's our friend, the Heron. It's the same one in each video. He follows me around, you know. It was just one day away from October and the weather had turned chillier for sure, many boats having their stoves lit. Isn't this an amazing contraption to have in your garden? Some people have trees, some have flowers, they have a crane. Entering the heart of Macclesfield, there's a Canal and River Trust yard on the left, but of much more interest is the old Hovis flour mill, built in 1831, but now a block of flats. There are moorings here, with a poor edge, but it's OK to stop to nip to the shops.
With my fridge restocked with cheese, I carried on through the town. It's up onto that bridge you need to go for the shops, so what a nuisance to find the towpath barricaded off here. I had to shin up that stone wall and jump over the handrail. No idea what that was all about, but a right nuisance. Then I discovered much nicer pontoon moorings just on the other side anyway, and made a note for when I'd come back. Out of town and back into the countryside. It's well known locally that these cows enjoy watching a game of rugby from their grandstand view here. No sporting action today though. Here's another of those disused swing bridge places. The first of about three in quick succession if I recall correctly. These can sneak up on you sometimes if you're not paying attention when steering. And there's the next. You can see where the end of the bridge would have rotated into place. Another snake bridge, seen from the other side. As you start to approach the town of Bollington, there's a wharf. I'll let this run so you can get the gist. It's very typical of these kind of places. Just beyond this bridge lies Bollington. They're very friendly folk at Bollington Wharf. I know this because I left the boat there for a couple of days on my way back. More about that in a future video. A Delphi mill, now used for offices, is a former cotton mill built in 1856. In World War II, they made parachutes here. Bollington Wharf goes on for quite a long way, and in the middle of those moorings is a winding hole to turn around. I carried on to Bollington Embankment and Aqueduct, which has a history of collapses, leaks and problems, and as I went across was in need of urgent repairs. This led to me having to race back across here just a few days later, as I'll explain in another video. The sister mill to Adelphi is the one dead ahead, Clarence Mill, which houses offices, flats and even a radio station. There's an art gallery and a cafe on the ground floor too. It was time for me to call it a day, so after filming these little horsey things, I began to look for a spot to stop. Between bridges 25 and 24, there was a perfect gap, so I took it gleefully. Cheerio!